Yes. Good morning, everybody here with us and uh, on the interwebs. Yeah, the back row, the back row crew. Everybody's, uh, yeah, thank you. It's good. You guys are all out of the splash zone. Um, sometimes, you know, yeah, that's right. Um, everybody on the front row. Yeah, that's right. Everybody in the front row, you better bring like an umbrella or a raincoat or something. You just never know. We get really passionate. All right. Hi. Um, yeah. She was at a she was at a sleepover last night, so this is the first time I've seen her today. Oh yeah, turquoise, turquoise, yeah. All right, um, all right, Jeff Bagwell, everybody. Yeah, shake and. So no 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 joke. This morning, uh, we were praying you know, just uh, over everything. And I <laughs> I was just like, you know, God, I just thank you for, you know, for bringing us together because I know you looked down from heaven and you saw a bake and you were thinking there needed to be a shake with the bake. That it is not good for the shake and bake to be apart. And so I was just thanking God for, for our friendship and just bringing us together. And, and, then, and then, I, then I could, I could feel like, because I had my arm around him and we were, we were praying, then I could feel his, sh his shoulders bouncing because he's like. <laughs> you notice how sometimes things in church that normally wouldn't be that funny, but because they're happening in, in church. Yeah, like if somebody passes gas in church, especially if it's in one of those old wooden pews, you know, you could feel the reverberation. And it's just like I just remember as a kid, somebody did that. And I'm mean, like, I could not recover. Just the, the rest, I it just you might as well just end it right there, because I just I'd be like, you know, like I remember this one time. Uh, it's not about passing gas. Uh, my cousin, my cousin Brooks was was uh, he had fallen asleep, um, which if you have insomnia, sometimes man, you just go to church and be like, I have no problem sleeping, right? Um, and he had fallen asleep, and he was having this dream. Sometimes our pastor would ask somebody in the congregation to close us in prayer. You know, like, brother so-and-so, you want to close it, right? And so some of you, yeah, grew up in church, and be like, oh, yes, yeah, it's bringing back, you know. And so my cousin Brooks had dreamt that Pastor Curry had asked him to close in prayer, but it was like in the middle of his sermon, right? And so Brooks just stands up. Right in the middle, we're all like, we're like, we're like, what is he doing? And then he just starts praying, Father God, we just, well, and, he, and he just starts praying, and we're like, like grabbing him, we're like, what are you doing? And it was like, it, it was like perfect timing because Pastor Curry had just made this, like, you know, those points where they're like, and they leave that like dramatic pause, you know, and he makes this point, and he's there, and Brooks, like, his voice just carried out throughout the whole thing, and we're like, what are you doing? And he, and he wakes up, and then he's like sitting down, and he, he just can't look up at anybody. He's just like looking down, and then you start to get hot, and you start sweating a little bit, because you're just, you feel like everybody's looking, at you. anyway. Um, that has like nothing to do with anything else that we're gonna do. I just, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. My therapist tells me it's good for me to talk about these things. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> huh, what am I doing there? Uh, but you know what? It is, um, I tell you what, it's always good to be in God's house with our fellow brothers and sisters, you know. And, um, you know, we are called the family of God. And when we get together, you know, we should laugh. You know, we should rejoice. You know, God has done the greatest thing that he could ever do for us in Christ. And so, like, when we come together... It should feel more like a family and less like a business meeting, you know. And um, but uh, you know, this first song we're going to sing this morning, um, I we introduced it last week. It's called Champion, and um, you know, Jesus is our champion. Um, and uh, you know, what a great thing that we have. You know, the enemy 
is the great accuser. You know, he doesn't let you forget about your failures, right? And uh, But we have a champion that has defeated him. You know, he's defeated death, and we stand in the wake of his greatness, right? We are a part of that. Um, you know, so I don't know what kind of week you've had. I don't know what you kind of been through this week, but uh, Jesus is still the champion. He's still on top. Um, he is undisputed, right? He's undefeated. Um, and uh, that is a great hope that we have, that no matter what's going on, we can rely in his greatness uh, because ours falls short so many times. So uh, join me this morning, and uh, let's, just, let's just pray. Let's begin a conversation, you know, with the Lord. And I just want to invite you to close your eyes, and let's start turning our focus toward Christ and toward heaven. And um, <clears throat> like the words of that old song, you know, turn your eyes upon Jesus, right? Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So, Jesus, man, we just look to you this morning. Father, I pray that you would help us to push out everything that doesn't exalt you, that we would begin to just remove those things that are going to distract us this morning, whether that's our finances or relationship or family members or whatever it is. I pray, God, that we would just focus in on you. Holy Spirit, we just want to invite you um, to do your thing in our hearts. Father, search us. And Lord, if there's things there that don't please you, God, I pray that you would uh, help us to be courageous, God, to, to confess those things to you and, and to, that you would cleanse us. Lord, we know that when we confess our sins that you are faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we recognize that you are blessed. We recognize, God, that you are everything you say that you are. You are a champion. We love you. And, God, I pray that as we sing this um, to you this morning, God, that you would just, there would just be some supernatural transactions taking place, um, that we would trade, God, our, our sorrows, our shame, God, for your love, that we would make room for your love, for your peace, for your hope, for your forgiveness uh, this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you guys want to join me? And uh, let's sing this this morning. so hard to see it took me so long to believe it if you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you get what we don't deserve it you take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, yeah. I am who you say. the striving sea so
on those words and just think about whatever you fear whatever's holding you down realize that Jesus is overcoming let's just sing this in faith this morning come on you are my champion giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle That's good stuff, man. Yeah. That's good stuff. All right, go ahead and have a seat. And uh, when Luke said we're singing the champion, obviously I wasn't here last week. This, well, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, th- there you go. For the younger folks may not know who Carmen is, but he passed away earlier this year. But he had a song called The Champion, and, uh, you know, it was very dramatic. So when you said we we're going to be singing the champion, I'm thinking, oh, we're going to do Carmen's version of the champion. So, I wouldn't put it past me. I, I wouldn't either. Yeah. I think you could do it and do it well. Maybe a little witch's invitation. There, <laughs> Remember there that one? If you don't know who Carmen is, go to go to YouTube and the um, witch's invitation. It, oh, yes. yes, yes. It was like a three-act play. It, yeah, it was. But Carmen would. Uh, he was known for his storytelling songs. And uh, he would talk, it, it, you just have to go watch if you look and up some the champion. And some serious curls. And, uh, yeah, so anyway. Homeboy was using, like, soul glow. <laughs> soul glow. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> that was good, though. Huh? Um, anyway. Um, Everybody know Common is the greatest entertainer <laughs> of all time. <laughs> there you go. Wow. <laughs> How quickly, how quickly we go from here to here. Um, anyway, but uh, glad you're here this morning. It's good to be back. Good to see everybody. And um, we uh, we've got our prayer journal. Elizabeth's writing in there right now. So again, just uh, that'll be out each and every week on the back table. It's just um, we pray for things all the time, and I think we forget what we pray for half the time. And so if we get a chance to write it down and we start praying, we get a chance to see God's faithfulness and consistency in our lives and in the lives of our community. And so, you know, that's why I want to do it. Plus, there's so many things going on. Sometimes people don't want to mention prayer requests out loud. So, yes, we'll pray for folks in here on Sunday morning, but then um, want to make sure we're praying during the week. Um, And then it just gives you an opportunity for others to see, you know. And so um, you can take a look at that before you go. Um, Maybe write something in it and or, you know, maybe write a few names down. And and this week is your... um, 
as you're praying. No, no, take your cell phone, take a picture of it, and just, um, you know, pray for it this week. Um, there's requests that have been mentioned in there. So, um, But this morning, I mean, obviously we'll pray today, and we have been, and we will be. But I want to take an opportunity to share another video from one of the young ladies we are supporting. Um, you know, uh, on the back table there, we have all the cards, and we've been talking about the different individuals that we, we support who are um, on mission and are going around the world uh, to, to share the gospel. And so um, I've been asking them to try to make videos to send to us so we could, you know, so they can talk to you because a lot of times they, you know, they're gone. They can't get here and give us updates. Um, but Ellie made a little video two weeks ago. And uh, so uh, this morning I want you to hear from her um, exactly what she's doing, kind of an update, um, what she's up to. I think she's the first one we decided to sponsor. And, uh, and, and when I say sponsor, we, we give to her um, uh, each month just a little bit. But um, she's part of, you know, she's part of our community, and that's one of the ways that we take the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world, as the scripture says, um, is by um, helping support a lot of these individuals who are going on mission. And so, anyway, I want you to um, hear from her this morning, and uh, you know how videos go around here. So let's (laughs) see. So I'm going to time it with Justin. So hang on. I'll make sure we get some good volume here. All right, I'm going to press play. You ready? All right, here you go. Good morning, Phoenix. Hi, I miss you guys. Hey, Uncle Kev and Jeff and Kelly and Luke and Joy and I bet Justin and Danielle are there and anyone else who's there that I'm missing, I'm sorry. I love you and I miss you guys. Um, Until I can come join you guys for a Sunday, I wanted to give you guys a quick update and give you a big smile um, and just say thank you for your prayers and support and and I wanted to show you guys where I work too so you can kind of get a feel um, of what I'm doing and what you're partnering with a little bit better. Um, So this is my church building here, Gate City. We're also a house of prayer. So that means that we facilitate 24 seven worship and prayer. So whether it's four in the morning or four in the afternoon, we have at least two people in this building worshiping and praying and our doors are always open um, all throughout the night, all throughout the day. And so um, we pray for different prayer topics throughout the day um, and we worship and praise the Lord because he's worthy 24 seven. And we, so this is in Lawrenceville. And so right, I don't know if you can hear it, I can hear it, right here is Buford Drive. So we're right off 85 or 985 on Buford Drive like 30 minutes from where Phoenix is now. Um, And so our prayer room is open. I just want to invite all of you, if you want to spend an hour or two or however long with the Lord at any time of day or night, weekend, whenever, um, come and spend time in our prayer room with us. Come worship with us. Come pray with us. Um, Awesome. So I'll, I'll walk in the building and show you guys our prayer room and then also say hi to some interns. Um, Right now I'm, I primarily work with our internship. So it's Uh, people who have decided to give three months to the Lord um, and a lot of um, in the context of worship and prayer and learn. We teach um, all sorts of biblical classes and we do some outreach and um, this is the first step for those who want to go um, into full-time missions in the Middle East, North Africa, where we have some bases in really unreached areas. Um, And then I also prayer lead. I, I prayer lead on Monday nights and Tuesday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Um, And yeah, I just, I do some admin and some other stuff around the house of prayer. So let me show you inside the prayer room and say hi to some interns. And then um, I'll I'll give you guys a couple prayer requests as well. Okay guys, so here are the doors that never get locked because we're always open to people in need um, who need to come and commune with the Lord. And so right in these doors, here's my friend Aisha. She did the internship with me. Um, and this is our prayer room, and so this is our main sanctuary, um, and so this is where um, 24-7 worship and prayer continues on and on and on. And so um, on, sorry, on Wednesday mornings we pray for God to send laborers to the unreached regions. We pray Matthew 9, um, and so we just finished that prayer set, and so I'll, I'll show you inside the prayer room right now. It's pretty chill in here. Here's Saya. Hey. He also did the internship with me. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, so our interns are in class right now, but they're gonna say hi real quickly for us. So here's where we have most of our classes. Hey interns, will you say hi to my partners? <laughs> so these are all the guys that have made it possible for me with you. These are the lovely interns that you guys are pouring into. Thank you so much. Can someone tell me how the internship is impacting your relationship with Jesus? Literally the best decision in my life. Yes, yeah, our lives. Wow, praise yes. God. Yes. Amazing. That's my boss, Becca. Yes. All right, thanks, guys. All righty, guys, so those are our interns. I'm so glad you got to see them. I love working with the internship. Those are the people um, that I get to directly pour into, and you guys also get to indirectly pour into, um, and really lives get changed in the internship. Um, so, yeah, so I'll give one more update, and then ask for prayer. Um, and then I'll end this video. So I have a really unique opportunity this fall to go and visit one of our bases in the Middle East. Um, it's a really unique opportunity because we don't send out short terms to short term teams, excuse me, typically because of security purposes and effectiveness purposes. We just don't do that very much. Um, and so there's something going on in one of these bases. I'm being vague on purpose for security reasons. Um, there's something going on and so they're sending in some extra support for prayer um, and just to give lift to our missionaries there it's really exciting what God's doing um, so the base I'm going to we have I think three missionary families one of them just had a baby and they don't have family to help babysit and um, to love on them through that and so uh, me and a small team from here are gonna go there for three weeks this fall so I'm really excited for that and I personally feel very called to advance the gospel where it's never been before I feel called to the three billion people who have no opportunity or way to hear the name Jesus currently. Um, I feel called to frontier missions. However, it, I am I do not feel called to the mission field yet. And so stateside, that, that's what I'm still working um, to advance the gospel in the, among the unreached. Um, but it just looks like stateside right now. So anyways, all that to say, this will be a bit of a vision trip for me too because I haven't been overseas in a while and I haven't been in a closed country in a while. Um, so I'm really excited personally for that and so um, I'll probably give you guys some specific prayer requests too as my team goes um, if you would if you would pray for financial provision for my team members I have everything I need already um, but for financial provision for my team members um, and then also for me in general I still feel pretty new here um, I'm going in a relationship but I'm just so hungry for deeper relationships um, with friends, coworkers, and everybody, so that's a big thing for me relationally, wanting to go deeper with people, and then uh, I think the third thing that I'd love prayer for is time management and stewardship, because there's so much need both here and outside, and there's so many demands and requests, and um, I want to do everything, but I can't, and so I would love prayer um, that I would steward my time and energy and abilities according to how the Lord wants, not how I want or man wants or... Um, anything else so that would be awesome um, so yeah I just want to say thank you guys so so much um, I don't know if there's I don't know if there's anything like um, having a partnership team uh, I was trying to think of analogies but um, I feel so covered and loved and provided for and encouraged and so it's like whatever I'm doing in hard moments or easy moments or incredible breakthrough moments with the Lord with people um, I feel like you guys are with me because you are and you're in this with me so thank you so much um, I hope this helps you to see a little bit more of what you're a part of um, and so yeah I love you guys I miss you guys um, I hope to see all of you very soon okay there you go sorry I put it on uh, mute um, Anyway, she gave you a thorough <clears throat> uh, tour of what of, of her facility and, and update on all the things that she's doing. And so, um, you know, I just I'm, I, I've been trying to get with all the different folks we're supporting and just 
letting them be consistent in their communication with us so that you can hear what's going on and know that, um, you know, what we do is more than just show up here <laughs> on, on Sunday morning, but when you give and you put stuff in the basket, it's going to help folks like that and people here locally as well, um, which we've helped fix a car in the past couple weeks. We've uh, we paid some utility bills and also some rent for people, so just, you know, just want to let you know those are things you do when you put money in the basket, but anyway, um, did you have some? Yes, yes, Oreo. Okay. 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 So she's still, okay. What is the young girl's name? Caitlin, okay. So we want to definitely pray that Caitlin is found safe. Yes, for sure. So, um, Continue to pray for uh, Nicole and Ricardo as they recover from COVID. They're getting over it. They're, they're doing better. They're on the upside, so that's good. Um, I definitely want to pray for Ellie and those things that she asked us to pray for as well. And um, so anything else? Oh, and don't forget Maria, too, as she recovers. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth? <coughs> okay. Right. Mm. Okay. Millie. Millie. Okay. Good. It's all right. But you'll be with her. Mm. So Millie and is it Ka Caitlin? I'm just trying to make sure I get all that correct. So this old brain doesn't retain what it used to. So Caitlin and Millie. All right. Well, I'm going to pray. And again, you join me in prayer and uh, talk to God and dialogue to God as I do the same. And he's big enough to hear us all. So um, Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. We want to pray for Caitlin, and we pray that she is found safely. Um, Lord, you know where she is, and, and I pray that you would lead the search team, the rescue team to her. Father, we pray for her protection. Father, we, uh, we pray uh, for her family. I know that they are just probably going out of their minds, not knowing. And so I, I just pray peace and your presence with them during this time. Um, Father, we want to pray for Elizabeth's mom, Millie. Father, uh, you know how many days are left here on this planet with her. And so, Father, um, I just pray that her time with Elizabeth today and the time going forward is just a sweet time. It's a time of just being together, um, knowing that someday we'll all be together with you. But um, for now, you know, life has birth and it has death and it's a journey. And um, I just pray your peace and comfort with Elizabeth right now as she spends time with her mom and I pray for her mom to be awake some so them to have time to connect and have that time together Father we just continue to pray for those in our community who are sick you know Nicole Ricardo recovering from, from COVID we want to pray for um, Maria and just continue to pray for her body to heal from her car accident uh, Father just um, just ask for healing there Lord um, we, uh, we're grateful that we've had folks come in to our body who feel called to go out um, and so we want to pray specifically right now for Ellie thank you that um, she spent time with us and we're grateful for her um, that she feels this call in her life and so we're just praying that you provide her with the support team she needs Father um, I pray that you help her um, grow in, in time management so that she can be a good steward of the time that you've given her father continue to provide for her um, her needs financially and, and Lord uh, I just thank you for all the things she's doing but uh, she looks to go overseas this fall um, we pray that uh, that would be a trip that would be life-changing not just for her but for the people 
she will go to work with and encourage. And Father, just pray that, um, well, I know you'll use it. And uh, so, Father, we're just grateful for that, just for Lewis coming today. I know he's out on mission in and out, so we just um, continue to pray for him as you use him in this world to reflect your life and your love. And so, Father, we are grateful for the others, um, that we have Rachel and Paxton and Madeline, those that are out there um, going into different countries, different cultures, loving on people in your name. So, Father, we pray your provision for them. And now, Lord, um, as we continue on in, in worship and then open up your word and look at another parable to be reminded of what the kingdom of heaven is like, Father, I pray that you would just use this time to allow our our hearts and our minds to just focus on you and let go of the things of the world for just a little while. Um, Holy Spirit, soften our hearts. Help us understand what we need to understand from Scripture and begin to just, can, or I should say, continue to allow the process of you, Holy Spirit, transforming our lives so that we more accurately reflect Jesus and how we, we live day to day. And so, Father, we are grateful and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And it was uh, really cool hearing um, from Ellie and seeing all of uh, what she's being a part of and knowing that we're a part of that too. Um, you know, so I'd encourage you um, to continue to give. Um, you know, she's one of several. Um, that we're supporting, you know, you got Paxton and, and uh, there's a there's a few others too um, that we are uh, kind of supporting, and it's interesting to think about like, you know, all of us have different needs, right? Um, you know, Ellie's got certain needs, but then you know, all of us in here, um, you know, have needs as well, and uh, you know, Jesus tells us, you know, hey, don't worry. Don't worry about these things, right? Like, I've got you. And, um, you know, this song that we're going to sing is based on, you know, some of the words of Jesus, right? It's called Sparrows. And it's uh, the idea is like, you know, if God takes care of these sparrows and he dresses the lilies of the field, um, surely he's going to take care of us because he says, how much more valuable are you than many sparrows? You know, um, and I don't know if you've ever taken the time to really look at the detail uh, on birds. But it's incredible, like some of the colors, uh, some of the patterns, um, the way that, you know, we, we would have never figured out flying if it weren't for birds. You know, and us, like everything, even the way that our airplanes are designed or as obviously does, it's based on a bird. You know, and uh, it only took us a few thousand years to, to catch up to what God did like day one of creation. You know, like, <laughs> great job, you know. Um, but uh, as advanced as we are, we're still nowhere near advanced like of what those things can do. But yet, Jesus says, you are so much more valuable than many sparrows, you know. Um, and if they're not worried about where things are coming from, then we don't need to be either, you know? And so, man, as we sing this song together, I, I pray that that message really not just hits your brain, but it really hits, like, you know, your spirit. Um, because, you know, yeah, there are concerns and things that we have, but at the same time, man, the Lord's going to take care of us. We need to put our hope and our trust in him, you know? Let's, uh, let's sing this together. The sparrows not worry about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. A tree that's planted by the water isn't faced by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good care of me. 
You know what I need before I even ask a thing. You hold me in your hands with a kindness that never ends. Carried in your love no matter what the future brings. Cause you take good care of me. The sun's not worried about the winter. Soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Come on, let's sing it out. Cause you take good care of me. You take good care of me. You know what I need before I even ask a thing. You hold me in your hands with the kindness that never ends. Carried in your love no matter what the future brings. Cause you take good care of me. And I know there must be more. But I can't get past your kindness. I know there's got to be more. But I can't get past your goodness. I know there must be more. But I can't get past your kindness. I know there's got to be more. But I can't get past your goodness. Because you take good care of me, you take good care of me, you know what I need before I even ask a thing, you hold me in your hands with a kindness that never ends, carried in your love no matter what the future brings. Cause you take good care of me. And I tell you what, in the quietness of this moment, why don't you just thank God for things he's specifically done in your life. The way he keeps showing up. The way he keeps loving us. The way he keeps keeping his promises. You know, it's so good for us to remember those things because it gives us strength to know that everything I'm in right now, he's going to come through like he did before. Just like he brought the children of Israel out of slavery, he's brought us out of the bondage and slavery of sin. He's been kind to us. He's going to keep keeping his promises, and we can trust him. And we know this, that God demonstrated his love for us, and while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And I love this song because it's such a great declaration of the gospel. This is the cornerstone of everything that we believe. It's what Jesus did. It's why we have hope. He's our champion, and the punishment that was meant for us, he took upon himself. Let's sing this together.
Christ has died. Christ has died. We are forgiven in Christ alive. We are the risen and he shall come again. Praise the King. Praise the King. Upon our hearts, His name is written, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We're pouring out a song of praise together upon Him, yeah, upon Him. We're singing out, Christ has died. thank you so much you are someone who keeps your promises you never fade you never lie you never let us down and Lord even sometimes when it looks like we've lost all hope Lord we know that you're still working that you still got a plan God that all of our hope and our joy and our trust and our peace God and our forgiveness our provision, God, is in you. It's in you alone. It's because of the blood of Jesus, God, that we can even come to you this morning. God, thank you so much for providing a way for us to come to you, God, through Christ. And Lord, I just pray that, God, that we would just become so aware of your Holy Spirit, of your love of your peace, God, I pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding would guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus.
begin to thank the Lord in your own words this morning. Just let it come from your heart. Just feel his love washing over you this morning. said. Amen. Thought I'd, now I'm on again. I can't get that right. I shut it off. Yes, there you go. Okay, thank you.
Well, I leave it on, then I don't want to have one of those, you know, moments where I'm singing or something and it's going out there, you know, because you don't want that happening. Anyway, or one of those naked gun moments, you know, if you've seen the naked gun from the 80s. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> we are continuing on in our series, Likeness, and um, we become what we like. And this whole, it's the whole idea behind this series this summer is to look at the parables of Jesus, because Jesus is trying to take these um, ideas or, or, or these truths, these realities about the kingdom of heaven. He's trying to make them understandable to us in everyday life. And especially when he's talking to the people back then, 2,000 years ago, who he was living with and doing life with, um, for them it was a whole new paradigm shift because uh, it, the, the religious system had kind of corrupted the whole God thing. And so here's Jesus on the scene, and he's being rejected by the temple, being rejected by the leaders of the religion at the time of Judaism. And he's trying to say, you guys have gotten so far away from what God intended. And he's like, I'm trying to show you what the kingdom of heaven is like. And so all these parables are about what the kingdom of heaven is like and what we should be like as Christ followers. And so, you know, it's this whole idea that we want to be like Jesus. And the more we become like Jesus... The more people see the life and love of Jesus in us, and we, we're just a reflection of this Savior who has saved us, and the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. So this is the whole idea behind this whole series, and as we walk through these parables. And so today we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 25, and, and we're going to be looking at the parable of the ten bridesmaids, okay? And so I want you to understand, I, I've, I've broken this down verse by verse today. As we walk through it, because I want you to understand culturally, they did weddings a little bit different than we do today. And so he's telling a story about, or, or he's giving a story about what the kingdom of heaven is like. And he's using a very common ceremony, a common thing that took place in their culture, which is a wedding. So when you, we refer to the, today we refer to the bride and the groom. Okay, you got the bride and the groom. You know, you're going to, in, in scripture, you see a lot about the bridegroom. It's, it's the groom, okay? It's the male in this. So let's read it, and we'll go ahead and break it down um, from here. So verse, verse, uh, chapter 25, verse 1, then the kingdom of heaven will be like, all right, there it is, there, the kingdom of heaven. In other words, God's kingdom, this place that we spend eternity with the Father is like this. Ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Now, the bridegroom here is Jesus. All right, so as Jesus is telling this parable, he's talking about himself. He's talking about the Messiah himself. So a Jewish marriage followed a period of engagement that was almost as binding as, as, as the marriage. So there was this period of engagement, and it was almost like you were married during that time. Okay, it was, It's a lot more, um, I don't want to say restrictive, but uh, huh? solid, right, it, it, during that, that engagement period. So... At the marriage of the bridegroom with his friends, the groom went and bought the bride from her father's house to his own house, where there was a feast held. This was the procession that the ten girls in the story went out to meet. So, there, so, the, so the groom's going to go and get his bride and bring her to his house, where they're going to have the wedding feast. They're going to celebrate. The party's all set up there, okay, ready to go. So that's, that's the scenario here. And so, so there's ten bridesmaids, and they have lamps and oil here. And so let's continue in this, and you'll, you'll, get, you'll get the picture. Uh, verse 2. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. It's important to get this, okay? Five foolish bridesmaids, uh, five wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. They haven't even had wine yet. They hadn't even got to the party. They're already drowsy and fell asleep. But here's the deal. I know. The, but the groom was delayed. All right? Jesus has been delayed. He hasn't come yet. He was supposed to, they thought he was going to show up at this time, and he hasn't. All right? So now they don't know when he's going to show up. That's important to get in this. So the five that were wise, the Greek word there means provident. And it means they took care to make a proper provision. Um, beforehand, they left nothing to be done at the last moment. They had, a, in other words, the wise had a relationship with Jesus. The wise people decided they were, the wise bridesmaids, they decided they were going to follow Jesus. In other words, they are the believers. Those people who place their faith and trust in Jesus Christ 
what we call Christians or Christ followers. That's who the wise represent. But it's interesting, this, this, the Greek there, they took to make proper provisions beforehand. In other words, when they, when they were presented with this scenario, they decided and they chose properly to put everything in place so that they had everything covered. Okay, that's important to remember. So here we go. Now, the five who were foolish, which might be translated as careless, is gen- gen- generally um, rendered foolish, but it can also be defined as he who sees not what is proper or necessary. So we can call them unwise, we can call them foolish, but we can, what we do know is that they lacked vision of, of who, the, you know, of, of being prepared, if, if whether that, the, the, um, brought, uh, the groom, excuse me, was going to come on time or not. And so they did not see that it was necessary to have oil in their vessels. In other words, what Jesus is saying is there's people out there who do not see that it is wise to trust him as Savior and Lord and have him uh, in their lives. So the unwise ones represent people who do not know. So the five, so five of the girls were foolish. They did not consider the possibility that the bridegroom might not come at the time they expected when his arrival was delayed. They were unprepared. No one knows the time of their death or the return of Christ, who, remember, is the bridegroom, the groom. No one knows. Jesus says no one knows the time. Nobody knows when he's going to return. He says, remember, his disciples asked him, well, Jesus, when are you coming back? He says, well, if you look and you see these things happening, he says your redemption draws near. In other words, the time for him to come is near. But it says no one knows, not even Jesus himself, the time and place, that, I mean, the time that he is coming back. Only God the Father knows that. So we know Jesus is coming back. We have signs to look for. We can see things that are happening in our world and in our culture that begin to point to Jesus' return. But nobody knows. And, and none of us know. None of us know the time when we'll breathe our last breath. I mean, we, you know, there's, um, there's that video um, called Saving Me. And uh, it's, uh, what's the name of that group that sings it? Um, it was out like, I don't know, 14 years ago. But it's a video where people are walking around and they all have clocks above their head. Um, and uh, what's the name of that band? I forget. I always forget their name. Um, you know, they, we all just want to be rock stars. They sang that too. Nickelback. Nickelback. Thank you. Thank you. I always, I cannot remember that group's name to save my life. So, yeah, there you go. No, it, it well, I, I like that. I, I like their albums. They're pretty good. Anyway, but they had the video called Saving Me, and, and so everybody's walking around with clocks on their head, and it's, it's time, it, it's how much time they have left in their life. I mean, yeah, it would be so much easier for us to walk around, oh, man, you, you better hurry up, and you ain't got much time. And then you got others, oh, man, you got all day. Um, but none of us know, we, we, don't have, we don't have these meters, we don't have these clocks that tell us, you know, this is how much time we have. Nobody knows, uh, we don't know that, you know, it, it just happens, um, you know, and accidents happen, or, or disease and death and things like that all happen, but none of us have that time. And so, um, what Jesus is saying is, listen, <laughs> the ones that were foolish, who are not wise, who did not make proper provision, um, you know, they have no idea when Jesus is coming. They have no idea when they're going to die. And so, each day you walk through this life without having a relationship with Jesus Christ, without confessing Him as Savior and Lord, I mean, you're like these foolish bridesmaids. That have no idea when the groom is going to show up. So, verse 6. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. I love that. It was midnight by the time the dude finally shows up. I mean, this is like the after party. Um, not the main party. I mean, it's, it's midnight. Okay? Um, and, and so, but that, that kind of has, that also, liter, in, a literal, in a literary sense, it's kind of that last moment thing. It's kind of, if you, when you read stories and you read things in literature, when it talks about midnight hour at hand, or the midnight, it's kind of like the last hour. It's kind of like the very last hour. Um, so at the very last hour, Jesus is showing up, and, and everybody's like, oh, everybody's waking up and freaking out. So verse 7, the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. It's midnight. They've had this going all day. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. All right? I think that's, I, I, I laugh at that, but we'll, we'll keep reading here in just a moment. But the oil 
really refers to in this parable is referring to the grace and the salvation of God, which is only found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. All right? And the lamp is like the heart in which the oil is contained. All right? So as Jesus is trying to give this story, um, each of these things have importance and they have meaning and they, they're giving us clarity. So they're giving us understanding of what God's kingdom is like. And, and if you haven't picked up it on it already, it's Jesus is telling the story. It's like, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. This is how you get into the kingdom of heaven. This is what it means to have a relationship with God and, and be able to be, know that you are prepared so that you have a relationship um, with Jesus. Now, verse 10. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And what? The door was locked. The door just wasn't closed. All right, because if a, a, a door is closed, you can push it open and you can still walk in. But the door was closed and it was locked, meaning anybody on the outside could not enter the house and, 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 and enjoy the feast with everybody else. They were locked out of that. And so, um, so the marriage feast, the marriage ceremony took place before the bride left her father's house. But a feast was given at the house of her husband, which was also called the marriage or the or a part of the marriage ceremony rituals. This part of the parable represents the entrance of those who are ready or prepared for the kingdom of God. When the Son of Man will come, which the Son of Man is one of the titles Jesus gives to himself, they will be ready, um, they will be ready who have repented of their sins, who truly believe on the Lord Jesus, who live a holy life, and who wait for his coming. Look, I listed a bunch of verses there. Um, and you could see all those verses right there, but I highlighted John 5.24, because it says this, I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but have already passed from death to life. So here's Jesus in his own words and John saying, if you confess with your mouth Jesus the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In other words, when you confess and ask God to come in, you have eternal life. Those that do not are condemned by their sins. All right? And so this is straight up. Jesus is just straight up saying, you want to know how to be with me in paradise? You want to know how to get to heaven? Here it is. And he's telling a simple story that everybody in his culture would get and everybody would understand. So, verse 11, let's finish the parable. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. Remember, the door was locked, so it can only be opened from the inside to let people in. But what happens? But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. So Jesus tells, tells this parable, verses 1 through 12, and then here he says in verse 13, no one knows the day or hour of my return. All right, so he's, he's laid it out there in something culturally that every person that every per person that heard this, this parable, this story, totally got in their culture. They totally understand, understood how the wedding feast worked. They totally understood that. That was something that went on every day in their culture. People were getting married just as they are in all, our day today. This was happening all the time. And so he's saying, listen, the kingdom of heaven is like this marriage feast for some who are prepared for it and some who are not prepared for it. And here's what happens to those who are prepared for it, and here's what happens to those who are not prepared for it. So the door was shut. It was shut. No one else could be, um, could be admitted to the party. And it's so true. When Christ's followers receive into heaven, the door will be closed to all others. There will be no room for preparation afterwards. Um, while we are alive and here on this planet, while we have breath in our lungs and the mental capacity to understand who Jesus is, we have this opportunity to choose Jesus or reject Jesus. We have opportunity to say yes to a relationship with Jesus or no thank you. But once we're done on this life, in this life, or if Jesus comes back while we're still alive, it's over. That, that's the opportunity that you have right there. And it says um, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, later on, if you go all the way to the end of this chapter, it says, and they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go to eternal life. And so Jesus is... <laughs> Jesus is making it incredibly clear about how you can be with him in eternity and how you can be in heaven with him. John 14, 6 says this, and in case you just need to know some, 
you know, you just need to know how, what kind of street cred Jesus has. <laughs> Jesus said, Jesus told him, all right, the, the words of Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come through the Father except through me. Jesus makes it perfectly clear that he is the gatekeeper. He is the one that through him we, have, we find forgiveness and we have a relationship with God the Father. And so, you know, when people ask that question, well, how do I know, you know, when I die I'm going to go to heaven? Or, or how do I know I have a relationship with Jesus? If you have placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Bible says that your sins are forgiven, past, present, future, and that Jesus has paid the price. And when we breathe our last breath and we stand before the Father in eternity, you know, Jesus is with, there with me. Welcome to the wedding feast. And we step into eternity, and we spend eternity with, with God the Father. Um, but if we reject Jesus, we've never had that moment in our lives where we said, I believe that Jesus is who he said he is. He is the Son of God. You know, he, you know forgive me for my sins or whatever. If we've never had that moment of confession, whether we said it out loud or whether we said it inside, and that inside voice we talk to ourselves and we talk to God with, you know, Jesus is making it very clear <laughs> that you will not be admitted into heaven. And it, it doesn't matter how good you are. I mean, I, I see it all the time. People are trying to be good. They're trying to do the right thing. And there's nothing wrong with being good. I mean, we all, you know, we all, uh, uh, we appreciate people trying to be good. But it's not about us working our way to heaven. It's not about us, you know, there's, you can't be good enough to get into heaven. Jesus makes it incredibly clear. It's through him. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus is making an incredibly exclusive truth claim. And that's, that's, a, that's what a lot of people in our world have a hard time understanding and believing. They think there's, there's other ways, you know, to get to heaven. And, and here it is. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't fault them for thinking that. I mean, I get it. But here's what I can't get past. Is that history records... And over 300 people confess <laughs> that they saw a man who was beaten and crucified on a cross and buried in a tomb walking around three days later. I, I, I can't get over the fact that people who were cowards during Jesus' crucifixion see him three days later and are willing to die for him. I can't get over this guy named Paul who persecuted Christians and is walking down the road when his name is Saul and he, come, he has this encounter with Jesus and it blinds him and it totally changes his life. And he goes from killing Christians and persecuting Christians and throwing them in jail to all of a sudden, sudden he, he becomes a Christ follower and writes the majority of our New Testament and letters to encourage Christians. And he's, and he's beaten multiple times. He's thrown into jail. He's put in horrible conditions and yet you continue to see Paul praising God and, 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 and continuing to encourage other believers in their relationship with Jesus in the midst of his hard circumstances. I, I just can't get past these things. And, and, you know, if Jesus didn't make this exclusive truth claim, then we could say, yeah, there might be other roads to get to heaven. But Jesus makes a very exclusive truth claim. And that is why it is so important when he, when he ascends into heaven, he says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, you know, teaching them about him, baptizing in my name. And the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know, and he, he gives us what we call the Great Commission. He says, now, it's up to you, it's up to me, it's up to you, it's up to us, the body of Christ, to love our world and to serve our world. And here's the reality, is many people are going to reject <laughs> that message that we bring. They might even make fun of us. They might persecute us. They did, the, they did for the early New Testament church. And they, you know what? They rejected Jesus they had Jesus standing in front of them in the flesh, and they rejected him. Even the religious leaders who had memorized the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah that has so many prophecies about how Jesus would come and who he is, they rejected him. They rejected Jesus. Guess what? A lot of times they're going to reject us. But we're not called <laughs> to make sure they accept. We're just called to reflect the life and love, to be like Jesus, and to share that and let them know how you can accept Jesus. It's up to them to be convicted by the Holy Spirit and to say, yes, I want Jesus. Then we can walk alongside them, you know, and, and with, through baptism and beginning to help them grow as a believer. But, but here's today's transformational truth, and it's just as simple, it's just scripture. 
It's Romans 10, 9. <laughs> if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I mean, that's, uh, today is nothing but a salvation message. It's as simple <laughs> as simple could be. Jesus said, listen, if you're wise, you will choose to follow me and give your life to me. If you're unwise, you won't. But no, <laughs> there is a feast in heaven that is going to last for eternity. And when the door is locked, no one else gets in. Which means you spend eternity separated from God. Which means you spend eternity separated from hope. What makes hell hell is the fact that there's no more hope. I mean, what I love about this life is that we have hope. But man, do you, some of us have been there before. When you feel hopeless, you become depressed. You quit. You give up. I mean, hope changes things. And, and, and so an eternity separated from God. And, and, and Scripture talks about the torment that goes on in that place. And, and that it's like being thirsty and never being able to quench your thirst. I mean, I th there's things we can relate to when we begin to hear the difference between being with the God, the Father for eternity, and, and not. But for each and every one of us, it's up to us. And so if you're here this morning or if you're watching on Facebook Live, it's as simple as knowing that you know. You've had a, have you had a moment in your life where you confessed, either with your mouth verbally or in that inside voice, that Jesus is who he said he is. I believe he died on the cross. He rose again for my sins. Jesus, forgive me. I, I, however you say it, God's listening to the sincerity of your heart more than the words you say. And so if you've said that, the Bible says you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You're going to come into the banquet. <laughs> so whenever the bridegroom comes for you, you're good. You got enough oil in your lamp. You're coming in. <laughs> but if you've never made that confession, the Bible says you're going to be locked out. And so we're not guaranteed today. <laughs> we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So why wait? Why wait? Fill your lamp today. <laughs> Say yes to Jesus and make him Savior and Lord. So if you're here and you haven't done that, um, it's as simple as praying that prayer. Come see myself or see Luke. As soon as we get done, we, we'll pray with you and make sure that you've got that taken care of. But if you have, praise God. Um, that should give you comfort and confidence and hope. But at the same time, it reminds us that there's still a bunch of people out there who don't have enough oil. And, um, and, and you know what? It says in there, go get your oil, you know, go get it yourself. It wasn't that they, they didn't have the oil to give them. It was just that, that those five foolish bridesmaids had to go get the oil for themselves. Jesus has to give you that oil. <laughs> Jesus has to be the one that comes into your life. Because it's only through Jesus that we're made right with God. He was the final sacrifice for our sins. And so all we're called to do is be like Jesus. And which goes back to the whole title of our series is just reflecting the life and love of Jesus. And guess what? I'm going to screw up. You're going to screw up. We're going to do it inaccurately. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit works for us and through us in such a way that people will get a chance to see Jesus. And that's all they'll need to see in our lives. So, are you foolish <laughs> or are you wise? Do you have enough oil in your lamp or do you not have enough oil in your lamp? Um, Jesus makes it very clear. The choice is up to us. And so, that's the story um, behind the ten bridesmaids. So, uh, any questions or comments before? So, yes, Beth, here we go. We'll turn this on and pass it around. There you I was, go. I was just going to say that um, when you were talking about Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, later in that same passage is when he says, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you who's going to help you. Yep. Like right after this is where uh, at the beginning of the passage, he like comforts them and, um, you know, tells them that I'm going away. And they're all like, where are you going? Where yeah. are you going? And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I have to be with the Father. And guess what? You're in me. I'm in you. And the Holy Spirit is coming, and, and he's going to do even better things, yeah. you know? So I just, I, I always think that, that, whole, that whole verse, I mean, 14, 15, 16, 17, all four of those chapters, yeah. actually, of John are so, so good about, like, Jesus explaining it to, to them over and over and over. And they're just like, what do you mean? Where are you going? What's going on? I don't understand. Like, yep. and that's kind of what we do, too. Like, what, what, what? To like, yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's like they, they struggle it, it's not until Jesus' is, is death, his burial, and his resurrection that they have these aha moments and they get it. You know? And then Jesus says, wait in the, this room after his crucifixion and resurrection. Wait in this room until the Holy Spirit comes. You'll know. 
And they said it was like a rushing wind that came in, and, and then they knew. And it's like, then they, now they had clarity. Now they had the Holy Spirit in them that was helping them interpret all those experiences they had with Jesus Christ. And think about it. They only wrote down a fraction of what Jesus did. I mean, there's so much more that Jesus did that we don't even, we don't know. So, no, thank you, Beth. Great point. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah, here, pass it over for Lewis. Um, so you mentioned that the, the wise um, women prepared themselves right beforehand. Right. Would you consider preparing yourself beforehand? Like, what, what does that entail? Does that look like doing, right, doing works for the Lord? Um, could you prepare yourself by not leaving your room, for example? Right. Good question. In this particular parable, Jesus is being very specific. It's about salvation. It's about the preparation is, um, do you have oil, enough oil in your lamp? In other words, do you have Jesus in your life or not? That's, a, that's primarily what Jesus is talking about in this parable. Now, like some of these parables, like if you read different commentaries, you'll get um, people will begin to read into and say, well, Jesus may have been talking about this, but he also could have been talking about this. But this is very clear about uh, salvation. So the the preparation is, do you know Jesus or not? Um, now, you can, you can expand it some if you want to some of that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if I was, yeah. Uh, it, that's where, yes, this is true. Anybody can do it anytime, anyplace, anywhere. Um, you know, um, the process then, and maybe along the lines of what you're talking about, is for us to begin to grow in our faith. Um, what, you know, are we, are we prepared? Are we doing the things that help us grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ? Like, you're right, and, but that's different than salvation. Here, pass it, we'll pass it over real quick, please. Thank you. You kind of would have to refer to the great theologian Yoda, <laughs> you know, like, do or do not. <laughs> there is no try. You know, yeah. like you either have the oil or you don't. Yep. You know what I mean? You either have Christ or you don't. There is no in-between. And I like the way he really marries those ideas. Yeah. Uh-huh. I see, see what, what you I do there. there. <laughs> uh, what about those who realize they have the oil but don't light their lamp until they know he's coming? <laughs> what? Say that again. Those who have the oil in their lamp but are smart enough not to light it until they know he's coming. Well... Yeah, I, I know what you're saying there. Yeah, because if you light it, the oil will burn it and run out. Yeah, but they didn't know when he's coming. But they didn't light it until the announcement was made that he's coming. So. Well, I think that's when you're when you're looking at salvation. If we're if we're looking at the oil and the lamp, you know, the oil was in the heart, which is the lamp, and the lamp is burning because you're, you know, it's it's there. Like, I don't think you can separate the two. It is, if you have the lamp and the oil, it is burning. Uh, it's not that you extinguish it because when you have salvation in Christ, you have it. It is burning. It is there, right? And so there's no way to separate it and say, well, I'm going to go through this and go, well, if I have my lamp and I've got the oil, I'm just going to hang on to it, put it to the side, and then right before he gets here, I'm going to light it. Because ultimately what we, we're looking at here is right before you light it, you're dead, and it's too late to light it, and you actually, in fact, did not have the oil in the lamp or the salvation of Christ like we're talking about here. Yeah. So I'm going to jump Justin. back in. Yeah. Um, well, isn't that the gamble everybody takes? Like, there's a lot of people, you know, walking around here, you know, especially in the, the U.S., not so much other nations that are, like, heavily exposed to you know, Christianity, but here in the U.S. there's a lot of people walking around knowing that churches are there, knowing that Jesus is out there, blah, 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 and the gamble is, when do I light the lamp? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and they, that's up to them. And if they, and like, a lot of people on their deathbed who know I'm dying soon are like, oh, time to light the lamp. And then there are other people who have no idea when their death is coming up, too late. They didn't get to light their lamp. Yeah. I think that was the picture of the, the foolish bridesmaids. Right, the foolish ones were like, "I'm just gonna wait. I, he'll, he'll be here. You know, I, I'll just, you know, I'm gonna hang out for just a little bit." And then it ultimately didn't work out. Well, what happened? They were cast outside. You know, I think this is one of those. And, and Lewis, when you were talking, I, I think this is one of those where you look at it like this is so specific on 
just salvation. Like, if you don't have the oil, if you don't have salvation, you're not getting in. But this doesn't speak to, like, that's the justification side of things. Like, how did they get in? Well, they had the oil, and they, their, lamp, their lamp was lit, right? But then it doesn't talk about the, justifi- uh, the sanctification side, which is where we are becoming more like Christ. We are the doing aspects, like you were talking about, of like, well, because I have this oil, because I have this salvation, I am encouraged and I feel emboldened to go out and to spread the gospel, to do what Ellie is preparing to do, to do what you are doing, to do what really ultimately everybody in this room does on some level throughout their days as we're walking around, like we share the gospel because we understand that the reason why we have that oil is because of Jesus. And then because of that, we want to let other people know, by the way, hey, you know, I got this oil. Guess what? You can get this oil too. I can't give you this oil, but you can get it through Jesus. Yeah, and, and are there deathbed conversions? Yes, they happen all the time. Um, and, you know, the sad part is, is they missed out. They could have had so many years in their life where they did have a relationship with Jesus and they were able to they have the fellowship of community to be part of something like this, um, you know, to go and, and to share you know, I, I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to share with somebody and lead them to Christ or, or go on a mission trip and be able to, to, you know, bring Jesus in different ways to people on mission. I mean, you miss out on all that. You miss, you miss out on that relationship, all that relationship time here on earth. Once your lamp is lit and you, and you can see, yeah. like, if you've ever tried to walk around in your house with the lights off, you know, um, you think you know where everything is until your kid leaves a Lego. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, it, then it's like, mother of God. Like when you step on a Lego yeah. and you can't see it and you're not wearing shoes, it's the worst, right? But, like, the light, you know, Jesus says he is the light of the world. Right. You know, and when the light shines, it exposes things. And you can see things for what they actually are. Like, it's crazy. Like, once you start having the truth, you start having Christ illuminate your eyes, you begin to, to look at things in the world, and you can kind of see them for what they are. Whereas, like, sometimes other people who, who like, don't know the Lord, like, they're not going to see things the way that you see them. Right. You know what I mean? And that's, like, that filter of, of Christ is illuminating things. So, oh, my gosh. Like, I can see this for what it is, and this is why, wow, this is why the Lord tells us, hey, maybe stay away from these kind of things because they're going to get you all caught up in all kinds of stuff. Right. But, you know, uh, to refer to the other great theologian, Kanye West, <laughs> when someone asked him about his conversion, I thought his answer was awesome. He goes, yo, when you were asleep, you were asleep. Yo, but when you're awake, you're, you're awake. awake. Which sounds like, duh, but there's so much truth in that. You are very different when you are awake than when you are asleep, right? Ask my cousin Brooks. Yes. Uh, <laughs> standing up praying in the middle of church when church is still going on. But you're very different, and that's what, that's what Christ does to our lives. He illuminates that oil, like creates a fire that you can see things for what they are, right. that you can avoid things. Yep. You know, it's very different than when you're not. No. Great discussion. Great questions. Thank you for all um, who did that. We're running out of time. Continue the discussion, uh, but make sure you got the oil in your lamp today. And if you haven't, please have a conversation with us. We want to make sure you have that. So, all right. Hey, um, thank you. Y'all have a great week this week. Um, we don't have theology on taps, not for another two weeks. So, and good news at noon, it'll be the third Saturday this month. But other than that, um, we'll see you here next Sunday. Blessings.